Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, Simi and I are going to be talking about the road to states. That's Avengers 60th, Arata's, and all sorts of crazy mechanics that people are comboing together in modern age right now. This is episode 470. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, under the least of deadpan humor. Over oh, they, six uh, people over think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Then you'll be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're shopping on the shop.wizkids.com website, you can use code dial h 10 that's Dial H10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. This does not include Iconics, however. Use code Dial H10 on the shop.wizkids.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Just uh, enjoying the drier heat that we've had the last day or so. Instead, of the... I think it was a record today, wasn't? Didn't I hear that somewhere? It was like a record hot today for this week, at least. Oh, probably. Maybe not like, the summer, but yeah. Not definitely not like a record hot for Oh no, the not state, definitely not like record for like Nebraska. Yeah. But for this day, sure. Probably. Sure. <laughs> so it's, you pretty tanned up. You were looking pretty <laughs> dark when we filmed our Avengers unboxing. Yeah, as long as I don't put, pull my sleeves up or you don't look at my legs. I've, ah. got, I've got quite the tan going on. <laughs> Therein lies the secret. Uh Simi, what made me happy this last week, my man? What made me happy this last week was uh, I went to see The Flash. Ooh. Ooh, he's so fast. Spoiler alert. He runs. Whoa. Uh, um, I did that. Uh, went and saw some family. Did some family stuff. And, uh, you know, just had a had an extra long weekend. So that was nice. Well, that sounds pretty awesome. I was also there with you for The Flash. And it was a pretty good time. So... We had a pretty good time. I really, I really enjoyed that. It's day. in my top five animated DC movies for sure. <laughs> I, I, there's probably more animated on screen than there ever is like real. That seems to be the case for a lot of superhero movies, but for the Flash, I, I agree with you. Yeah. There was what's wild a lot of CGI going on. Uh, no spoilers or anything, but of the actors they have there's more cgi of their faces than there is just their faces <laughs> uh with so the like, exemption of like a few <laughs> but like um apparently ezra like again no spoilers apparently ezra miller's face was copy and pasted onto like a body double for some of the shots <laughs> so oh there's like weird cgi there it's funny it wasn't terrible cgi I can't. it was just sometimes it was very uncanny valley where it was just like oh yeah that's not human it's not quite right right so but yeah it was a movie there were definitely parts where i was like it's meant to look bad in this part right like it has to be <laughs> so I, I hope they definitely like, it's meant did to a... not be perfectly polished this isn't the first movie where we've seen like the flash and no. it's not even like the that we get the what was it um, the Nolan cut. The what was the the Justice? Oh, League the cut? Snyder cut. The Snyder cut. That's what it was. Yeah. Um. So we got the Snyder cut, which had way more flash than the original Justice League did. But even this one, like, distance itself from the visuals that they used in that one to show like the flashes yeah. and the speed and stuff. It was very strange. Uh, and I, I'm not going to do again. I don't want to talk about it too much because I it's pretty right, brand spoiler, new and right. i don't want to spoil or anything but i will say if you go to see it it does seem like th- this version of the flash has to like charge up to use his powers which i thought was weird he's like i have to focus and like you know ha! and then he like enters really think fast yeah. time or something but but no it was a fine movie for sure yeah i had a good time 
but all right, what made me happy this week? I'm not I'm not going to say the name of it, even though the name rhymes really well. I want to keep the pot. <laughs> might might bother some people. So I went to a Rocky Mountain Oyster Festival. And if you dare go down that hole, you can feel free to Google what that means. If you don't know what that means, uh, it's not really inappropriate, but I'm just not going to say it on air, I guess. I'm going to sign uh, for it. Did you? Okay. Yeah. I was curious. The I was like, because that, that billboard, yeah, along I-80. So yep. that's the reason I went, because I saw that like three times when I went to Lincoln, and I was like, I'm going to go. So send me in the billboards. They work. I mean, yeah. you know, you I'll know t- this. I'll tell my, yeah, my company. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> tell, tell I'll let them know tell that them. after uh, 108 years, we finally got one. <laughs> what purely off of a billboard, <laughs> not seeing it anywhere else, purely off of a billboard. I went to this festival, and wow, I had a great time. So you can you can tell them that because I what I spend ten dollar entry fee, sixteen ish dollars, and like nine bucks for like a water. Dude, water was expensive. Drinks Dang, were expensive. Yeah. You're like. I, I was like so bummed. Um, I was like, I was thirsty. It's a lot of fried, a lot of fried food. And it was good. I had a great time. I hadn't had Rocky Mountain oysters in actually like a really long time. And like probably since I was like a kid. And I was like, man, I, I remember enjoying them back then. They're doing like a whole thing for them. Yeah, I'll go. It was packed with people. It was like, oh, yeah. It's a I stood girl. in line for like 15, 20 minutes to get food. And then another like 10 minutes. If you, if you wanted like a beer or something, you would have been in line forever. You know, like, thankfully, they also sold water at the food part. Um, but they split up, like, the beer lines and the food lines. And it was like, wow. They, I mean, they had a band playing that somehow went from uh, Florida Georgia Lines Cruise. Like, they were just, like, playing basically, um, what do you call it? The the melodies of songs. Oh, the, sure. the little middle, the bridges and stuff. And they went from, like, cruise to party in the USA somehow. They, like, bridged that gap perfectly and i was like oh okay wow that's just flawless transition sure so they were a pretty fun band to listen to and i got my rocky mountain oysters i ordered a pound i ate the pound and i was like i am satisfied and then i just kind of hung out for a little bit and i was like all right i'm gonna go because <laughs> no uh he's like i was like all right well <laughs> that was fun and then i left and i was like all right glad i did that and then i uh there was supposed to be a storm Saturday, but there really wasn't anything. So I couldn't yeah, even say I beat much. it home. There was just like nothing really happened. So that was just that just made me happy. It was really fun. But obviously, yeah, going and seeing the movie with you guys and then hanging out at the festival. I was like, all right, right on. All's right with the world. And yeah. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> like that was it. I was like, probably was, spent more time. There's like, several of those line. festivals throughout the states. And Oh, nice. Uh, when I worked at Cashway, is a, it's a big food distributor. I worked in the freezer and every so often it was like twice a year we would get these massive oyster like massive orders for oysters and it was like one bar would order like six pallets like dang you know like full like you know five foot tall normal sized pallet just completely stacked with like boxes it was insane how much they would go through at those things i think i think they said they ordered like 2,000 something pounds of them, maybe even more, probably more, honestly, yeah, than that. I believe like, they, pro- they ordered a ton. And I was like, wow, okay. And they still had like other food you could get there too. And I was like, wow. Some dude, <laughs> this made me laugh way too hard. Um, he ordered those uh, and a foot long corn dog. And I. <laughs> Couldn't I couldn't not just laugh at him? I just thought that was a hilarious. He's like and some uh, toothpicks. Really, I want to I want to make a little really funny real combo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really it was really funny. Um. But all right, let's go ahead. Let's jump into some of these Avengers 60th Erratas. These went live on the win. I don't even know what day june 15th so just a little while ago uh this is pretty fun we're just gonna almost 1 a.m oh my gosh yeah 12 56 somebody burning the midnight oil over at uh hc rules team dude getting these erratas done that's that is incredible i didn't even notice the time of uh of publishing that it's hilarious i am gonna we'll just start from the top we talked about some crazy clea stuff last week ignore everything we said because yeah. almost right after that episode came out they changed her uh she's more balanced now versus being like a broken like unplayable yeah figure. essentially um, there was a way through like whatever means there was a way to get Clea's range value down to one which would mean 
opposing like you could potentially shell her up opposing characters couldn't get in her range and all friendlies would be like around her so opposing because of this trait opposing characters couldn't attack those friendly characters because they met the requirement of being within her range without the opposing characters being within her range and yeah. so yeah um i was told there was ways to do it without having to have her range down to one like you could put her in the corner of a map yada yada that kind of stuff so there's still ways you could kind of do this but yeah that was essentially so the problem the new change so like basically you couldn't even target even if you were like adjacent to him basically because you weren't within like literally like clea's square or something like he was crazy uh so now they changed it to opposing characters not within clea's range can't target friendly characters within clea's range unless they are adjacent to the character they would target so now you can always hit them with close attacks yeah pretty, which is fine pretty simple you can always target them when you're adjacent i think most teams have a way of doing that if your opponent's trying to shell up with this kind of team, you're eventually going to close the gap. Um, right. It's still a very good power, a very good figure, and I think it's worth looking at to build around for sure. Uh, but, yeah, it's actually, you know, in the rock, paper, scissors match that hero clicks can be sometimes, it's not like an always win situation anymore. Exactly. The next change we go on to, this is for all of the new shifting masters of evil chases yeah. we just got. Almost <laughs> this unnecessary, is, you would think, at this point. It's very, it's very silly. <laughs> I I yeah. So shifting focus, but they have two different point lines, right? So it's just common sense to be like, well, I paid 50 points, so I shift into the 50 point line. No, I guess not. Because it doesn't say it in the text of the trait, they had to add um at free, if, you, if blank began your turn on the map, replace blank with another character with this trait. Here's what they added: at the same point value and on the same click number. So, why isn't yeah, this just you, in the comprehensive rules when it says like a I character know. would replace or um, that it should be you know would replace or, or be generated? Their point value can't exceed the like character's point value that they are being replaced or generated for or whatever. Why doesn't it just say something yeah. like that in the comprehensive rules? And then if they ever wanted it to like that, that uh, ruling to be broken, they could just specify it in a special power for that character. Cause this is just silly. Anyone that was really trying is. to argue, I can swap, you know, 50 point iron inquisitor into a hundred point ghost goblin. Like you're being silly and very, very disingenuous. Silly. Like, you've played this game long enough, you know that's not how these things should work. Yes, on paper, it could technically work that way because they didn't have that specific wording, but geez. I'm just, I'm glad I'm not that yep. level of player anymore. I know. <laughs> I never was, like, I guess. On, but I'm glad I'm not, like, in the competitive scene where, uh, you know, I balk at casual play and then I say things like, I, sh I can switch a 50-point character with a 100-point character because they forgot to specify. <laughs> yeah. The bending of the rules and all that stuff, and it's like, oh, I can, I can cheat this. Look at how I can use it, and it's like, jeez, goodness gracious, Silly. it's just a little, it's a little much, it's a little annoying. Yeah. Um. So they fixed that, which is really funny. Uh, next up, we have a change specifically for Ghost Goblins team up. I'm just gonna read the entirety of this really quick. If Ghost Goblin is on a listed theme team, friendly characters have Sinister Syndicate team ability. If they already have Sinister Sinister Syndicate team ability, and it has to say printed on their base when they use it modify attack plus one so it adds the print on their base because yeah. otherwise they would already have it from his i was gonna say did this come up with that. i don't know if it was iron did spider come, or yeah what it was. iron spider like, also had this exact have... same errata yeah so i think by the time they got to errating errata in iron spider uh, Avengers 60th was probably already shipping or was probably already right, like, printed probably or printed something. And, yeah, ready to but, go. Yeah, this, is, this was just another one where it's this is kind of like the same thing as the last one. This is a ruling that we've gotten used to enough where we should just expect it and play it as like that way, but because it's not written that way we have to either errata it or deal with the pushes glasses ups, sorry kid teleports behind you type <laughs> yeah. hero clicks players. 
the yeah. next change is for the Iron Man of War Machine Legacy card, which I, I think a lot of people notice this right away. Right. Um, but they have that same, when they, when they die, when they're KO'd, ability that Lex Luthor and Joker have, that World's Finest have, Poison Ivy, etc. Um, except theirs was missing non-KO clicks. So you, it's instead of you place them on their last clicks and heal them two clicks. So it would just heal them to another KO click. And they would well, remain. they actually have a they thankfully they have a click 10. So if oh, you put do. them on their okay. last click, which is like 12, they'd heal 11 and then 10. They'd be on their last click versus they should be on click 10 and then go to eight, basically. So, yeah, it, it was really funny where it's like, oh, nope, that's not how we've traditionally worded this at all. It needs to be last non KO clicks. Yeah. So Avengers Prime or, had the same thing. I also. Yeah, I they think, also had I think they changed that. Yeah, for, yeah. And then a secondary change for Avengers Prime was uh, they should. Uh, there's just two O's and should. They should have flight instead of boot symbol. I believe it's just on the card though, because yeah. obviously on the on the characters like figure they have flight. That was the only one listed as a clarification. The rest of these have yeah been clarification. Full Ooh, that's true. These have been all erratas because they the erratas. they have to change the text on the actual card. So. Very true. I guess that's why I, I don't know. I feel like I a lot of these also just seem like clarifications, but I guess it's they considered erratic because they have to add text. I don't know. Eh, it must be right versus yeah. uh, ooh, that's a that's a goof, that's a goof up, and then versus actual text. The legacy Loki, <laughs> um, he modifies his attack. So his my control, it says my control when Loki uses it, modify attack plus one for each action token, uh, and then it says on all targets. So. Versus, uh, I think maybe people are like, oh, action token on Loki, action token on who? Action uh, it's for all the targets. For Each so, yeah. action token on all targets. That So if you multi-targets, that's pretty easy to get a plus three. Easy plus three, yeah. Huh. Yeah, so Loki, he's balling. He's balling out. And then for the Legacy Ultron, uh, they added that Ultron can count range and draw a line of fire so they it used to say ultron can draw a line of fire from other friendly characters instead they now added that ultron can count range and draw a line of fire from other friendly characters ultron in their name uh, and when he does he has a max range of three but that add the count range and draw a line of fire to fit with again kind of just fit with previous wording for characters that work that way so that is all of our avengers 60th erratas and clarifications a lot of these erratas do just kind of feel like clarifications, even though they're said as erratas. It just kind of feels like, oh, hey, we lost some text. I, so, I see what you mean, Simeon. So, yeah, this I is all fairly is understandable when they have to add or change text in the power. It has to be, be like an errata. And then right. when they're just like clarifying a symbol is supposed to be this or because most of Spider-Man Beyond Amazing, uh, that set got one errata. And then like seven or eight clarifications because it was all like, um, you know, like we forgot to put this on the card. We forgot to put this on the base, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Right. And it's just kind of like little small things yeah, like that. And that's and that's really it. So that's all we had for Avengers 60th. Although there are still some really wacky, overpowered things that you can do. You want to talk a bit about. Uh, some Hulk and Scarab stuff. So why don't you yeah. tell the listeners all about the dumbness that is what these characters can do and that they should probably be expecting to see at their states a little bit anyways. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye on the ROC. They're probably going to issue an errata for ROC states uh, for these characters. But yeah, the Prime Hulk and... Um, We'll get into the Scarab kind of... Scarab's been like a issue for a while just because he does something that no other character can do or most other characters can do, and that's target and draw line, like draw lines of fire and count range from an opposing square from like someone that's equipped or just from an object that's like across the map, that kind of thing, which just leads into like a lot of weird interactions. But Hulk is a lot more simple. And by that, I mean I'm not a big enough nerd to uh, try and argue this one way or another but it is a much more simple misunderstanding whichever way because this has been 
in the last couple days argued ad nauseum online. So Prime Hulk has a 90-point line and a 10-point line. You'll only ever see him on his 10-point line. Um, Me and Ian did a video that we didn't upload, I don't think. But we did a video on, like, how easy it would be to get Hulk to click one from the 10-point line. Because Hulk has the Path of Destruction trait. When Hulk destroys one or more pieces of terrain, after resolutions, heal him one click. If it was a terrain marker roll a d6 and heal him half the result instead um so yeah so you're walking him through terrain you're using the cloak of levitation to sidestep into terrain blah 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 healing one click healing one click and then you're destroying a terrain marker at some point rolling a d6 healing half the result instead he starts on click nine so if you can heal up eight times Yeah, that's how math works. Eight times, then you're at click one. On click one, it's not like he's, like, insane on click one. He is a 13 for five with the Avengers team ability, so possibly a 14 for five. So he is very good on that click. He's not protected outwit or anything. Um, He has traded willpower, and then his defense powers have protected outwit. But, like, you can outwit his, like, charge or close combat expert or whatever you want to do if... You're trying to, like, stop him. The thing is, he's a 10-point investment, and yeah. people... The argument is people on both sides, one saying that because of the new terrain, um, the new destroys terrain wording, where blocking terrain is immediately destroyed when you move through it, they're saying that Path of Destruction, if Hulk is on click 9 and he walks 8 squares, that you would heal one click for each square that he walked through, which means that in a single power action on the right map, Hulk is just top dial after one action, not even needing, like, sidestep or anything. Um, If he has the cloak and you're playing, like, Dark Phoenix, then he can do it for, like, essentially a free action. So that's what one side is saying. I don't know who's right. A lot of quoting of the rule book on both sides. A lot of uh, agreeing and disagreeing on both sides for different reasons but then the other side is saying that um, because it says when Hulk destroys one or more pieces of terrain after resolutions so they're saying that either A after resolutions is after the resolution of the move or they're saying B that because it says one or more uh, it doesn't matter how many he destroys he gets to heal one or you know if it's a terrain marker for each action and so I don't really know how I would come down on this as like somebody that's going to judge estates. Hopefully there's a fix in before I have to do anything with it. But I will say that it says destroys one or more and it says after resolutions. I consider the resolution being uh, the move. So like after the end of the move. But right. this would trigger potentially, you know, eight times more than that, whatever however many times in one move but then that takes me back to when hulk destroys one or more pieces of terrain so that would be more than one so i think personally i would just rule it like the one i know there's a lot of people that disagree with that it's been more than apparent online through the 12 posts that i've had to read through trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong and at the end of the day, that's just not how they wanted it to be. They didn't want a 10-point piece to be able to heal right. eight clicks in a single move. Like, instantly. <laughs> like, And I, I know people hate doing spirit of the game or, like, you know, intention isn't, like, the rules. But at a certain point, this community has to realize that, like, we're not magic. We're not, like, super duper crazy rules because we have $100,000 tournaments kind of thing. We have to realize that, like, you know, some things aren't going to be worded perfectly, and geez. Like, you can just, you can assume that the designer of this piece didn't want you to heal to the 90-point line for a single action at 10 points. That seems right, like a fairly safe assumption. And by safe assumption, I mean, like, that just is what it was. Like, there's no chance... That like they designed it the other way. You can look at Wendigo. Right. Wendigo was very good at healing. Not even close to this good at healing. No. Juggernaut had like a similar way to heal. 
not even close to this way of healing, like not even remotely similar to how easy this Hulk cl like clears, not clears action tokens, but heals. Uh, so that's Hulk. I don't know which way is right. I personally think that, you know, just based on my uh, not super competitive mind reading the trait and the few posts that I've seen, I would personally rule it that it's heal one click for one action or like rather whether that's free action or you know dark phoenix makes a move whatever it is that right. is perfectly fine that is healing enough in my opinion i think it's really good yeah it's yeah still really it's really still good very good it doesn't need um, to be broken to be very yeah. good yeah so i really don't i i understand what people are saying about the wording and i'm like oh well technically if it's worded this way that's correct yeah. that's it has great. to do with like the immediately um, wording right and people are taking uh, like uh, I don't know, umbrage with that. Right. But, yeah. To me, it's like you you have to, you know, get off your high horse and be like, oh, I figured out how to make a 10-point figure, a 90-point figure, and I'm playing 390 points modern, and you're playing 300 modern, you right. leader. Look how smart I am. Uh, if we just step away from that and just be like, okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Yes, you can do this. And yes, maybe it makes sense in the wording. But would think genuinely with user brain. Would someone actually design a figure to do that? And the answer is no. No one would be like, oh yeah, 10-point figure, and then it instantly in one action gets yeah. to be a 90-point figure. No, of course that's not how... I gave even this if that's not how it works, dial of 90 not how it should work. So yeah. that there would be zero reason for you to ever use Right. Because as is, at 90 points, he's not like stellar or anything, but he can yeah. heal up super easy at 90 points. At 10 points, the way some people are ruling it, it's just broken. It's just, it's just here's yeah. a free 80 points every game that like you gained for literally doing nothing zero it's engagement insane. with your opponent you just you got the right map or you put down your own terrain or whatever it is <clears throat> it's silly luckily there's characters that have effects that say like opposing characters can't heal or you know there's tarot cards that say no one can heal stuff like that yeah but I assume there will be an errata for this guy or at the very least before states really kick off there will probably be so. an roc posting about his change i i would hope they either make it how he normally how everybody first understood it as where it's like okay if i do a move action and then another move action then another move action i can heal like maybe three something times in the turn or something like that why is it with versus these things the one we always know inherently how it's supposed to like how we should be playing it when it first right. releases and then it's like a few weeks after the release suddenly it's like this big argument over you know how long did we right. play tri sentinel before suddenly oh we man taking a free years. action to like all those pulse wave <laughs> all those colossals wave, yeah. it was literally like years until yeah. people were like oh, so right. it was out for clo close to two years before uh we started playing it the dumb way yeah um, the way that no one designed it to be <laughs> but yeah. you can next do. up is an interaction with a couple different pieces uh so we mentioned on this podcast back when we were reviewing uh, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing that Carnage has a rally die of six that he can replace any single D6 roll with a six when he has that rally, which is mostly used for blades, regen, uh, super senses, whatever. That kind of thing is what it's what they were gearing it towards. Sadly, turns out there's other things that use D6 rolls, one of those being the ultimate nullifier. So we talked about that a little bit when we were discussing that set review. And shortly thereafter, there was a couple tournaments where uh, somebody realized that there's a cheaper and more efficient combo of that with Moira and uh, Prodigy. Prodigy. Yeah, Prodigy lets him replace a single D6 roll with his five. So Moira can give him, and this is the Avengers Forever Prodigy, not the Xavier School. Obviously, the rally wasn't around back then. Um, so yeah, it's uh, when another friendly character within six squares in line of fire, so six squares, line of fire, rolls a single D6, you may remove one of Prodigy's rally dice to replace that die. So you replace it with his five for a single D6 roll. You combine this with Moira, who can give an uh, take a power action, give an X-Men a free rally die. So turn one, use power action, Prodigy has a rally die. And then that goes into Scarab, who has a uh, stupid ability 
that's it's been stupid since he was released but it's kind of waxed and wane with like how bad it is like how oppressive it is uh but this is his special damage power that he has on both starting lines so 50 or 75 although you'll rarely see him at 75 and this is scarab can count squares and range or four range and line of fire from unheld objects and opposing equipped characters, which is almost all characters nowadays. When Scarab attacks this way, he deals a max of one damage. So when he attacks that way, he deals a max of one damage. But if he's doing something like mind control using the radioactive clay, or if he's like, you know, just targeting for different effects, like say the ultimate nullifier, he can then oh. target. This is at least how it's been being used i don't know if this is correct based on his wording and the wording of the ultimate nullifier i'm not going to get into the rules i'm just saying this is the the thing that people have been doing uh ultimate nullifier reads power choose an opposing character within six squares and line of fire so you're counting that range and line of fire from an unheld object or an equipped character with scarab and he's copying this for free um from somebody that's next to him and is equipped with it he's probably not holding it himself uh, you choose a number from 1 to 6 to be X, then you roll a d6. If the result is higher than X, you deal X damage to the chosen character. If the result is lower than X, you deal X damage to this character. And if the roll is equal to X, you deal X damage to both characters. Now, the reason the ultimate nullifier didn't get a lot of use is because the randomness of the roll means that you never know, unless you're picking like 3 and you're, or you're playing like a character like I did with, um, daredevil like earth x daredevil where you just don't care if they take damage because they don't truly die from stuff like this uh this just does a lot of free well power action free damage you don't have to roll attacks so prodigy can say that x is five now so if you pick x to be four and then prodigy changes whatever your roll is to five that means that the opposing character takes four damage if you say five, then the opposing character and Scarab take five damage, which bad idea. But right, I, I don't know if because he's not truly equipped. I don't know if he actually would take that damage either. But anyhow, hmm. this is an interaction that can be done with a lot of different things. But essentially, Scarab, Ultimate Nullifier, Moira, and Prodigy allow you to across the board deal free damage, and you can do it like back to back turns. You can't do it turn one for obvious reasons at least you shouldn't be able to do it turn one but that combined with like scarab also being able to outwit through that range and line of fire thing is kind of rough because that's the one thing about the ultimate nullifiers it's dealing damage but it's not penetrating it's not unavoidable it's just you know most likely he's dealing you four damage and so if you have like invincible or impervious you at least reduce it by two but yeah, that's the the other thing that uh, people have been kind of freaking out about, and I don't blame them. If I was a competitive yeah. player, I'd be like, this is stupid and doesn't need to exist in the game. Um, right. I wouldn't ban it at the venue. I would just wait for someone to show up with it and then ban that person. I think that's fair. <laughs> if you come to not engage and not play well and just kind of ruin people's days because of your, you know, smart building decisions and expert rules knowledge uh you're not good for the community like i just think i think that's safe to say if if you're trying to get these gotcha moment things and you're gonna play against like a 15 year old kid and just ruin his day with like stuff that he's right. never heard of because he's not in the facebook groups then I, yeah i think uh you deserve to be banned from my venue i, I like that ban the player not the piece that's yeah. funny that's just honestly kind of fair for the way some of these people are I mean, I would have made the same, the, the same like gut call ruling for uh, Tri Sentinel and like Surter. If you were like playing that, sure. and that that's not nearly as broken. No, but I think anything that can just do some amount of like free damage without like true engagement, like Surter just walking up and just like free, blant, I killed all your like right. colossals, you know. Uh, Tri Sentinel doing the same, just destroying a bunch of blocking and then brant like penetrating damage to everyone. I think it's just uh, it's gross. It doesn't need doesn't need to be in the community. Yeah, there's people out there that keep trying to find this stuff and they'll keep finding it because at the end of the day, I think this game is made for casual play. I don't think it's you know 
I don't think there's a team of scientists mixing ruling chemicals together to create the next uh, I don't the know. perfect ruling yeah ah, here we are a set with no need for erratas of clarifications spent years developing it we've done it huzzah yeah it's hilarious oh boy well let's go ahead and jump into what we have been building for our state's tournament it's coming up it's only six days away kind of crazy to think about you know Simeon, Ian and I spent basically all day Sunday just working on teams, playing back and forth, doing some team builds. I really wanted to play the new Prime Captain America, and there's a few different ways to go with it, and I tried to make... I like Alpha Strike teams. That's what I tried to build with. So he has range four, improved targeting, adjacent, make a ranged attack, right? Um, if he made a close attack this turn, he gets to use that trade as free, so I'm like, okay, that's really cool. Um, Cap also just has straight-up knockback for all his attacks and all that stuff, and he stops knockback. You know, he gets a mobile when it's your turn. Uh, other characters can't use a mobile when it's or, or vice versa. And so I was like, okay, Ian had this idea for a team, give him, like, the Waldo arms and everything, and I played it, like, twice, and he rolled a one on the Alpha Strike for the Waldo arms, like, twice in a row, and I'm just like, man, if this happened in a tournament and I don't get a use caps yeah. boom close attack where he's like a 13 for five with like empower and all this stuff or 14 for f something something crazy and then get a followed up with a range attack that is also crazy eye stats then he is just like a, a brick 45 points and not doing much and then the rest of the team really kind of falls apart and stuff so that didn't work out um and i really wanted to use 1776 because i still think he's really good i think giving him the lasso of truth and this is another thing where if you played him and Cap on the same team, it was tough whether or not you wanted to give Cap the lasso so Cap can do the free in Cap is close, and then he can do his ranged also is free. So that's one way to always make Cap work. Um, but we wanted to give 76 the lasso because then 76 gets to hit, hopefully hit for free. Um, and then that way they only get two actions next turn, which I also think is really good. Uh, but this team just ended up not doing great against Ian's team, and I think Ian's team's very meta prominent stuff. So we scrapped it. We went with a really cool US agent build that uses the Masters of Evil chases, um, uses a few other characters, Sakari and Iron Man, stuff like that. And I've been enjoying that team. I'll, I'll admit I want to play it just because US agent is prominent on it and it makes him work really well. But of course, and this is 100% honesty, yeah, Sky Tyrant would be better than US agent. I think US agent's like a later game when he ramps up and he gets really good versus Sky Tyrant's like, he's there, he's ready, he's coming, he's going to bash you know like auto right away he's there for it um versus us agent building up to it and then just being better defensively and all this stuff than sky tyrant but that team did really well in practice in play i don't know how well it's going to do at the tournament but that is currently what i'm kind of working on myself just a non-theme you got us agent we got some massive evil we got sack man uh chip a few other stuff like that that's just like a really good tempo team that's kind of like, you know, I can't necessarily alpha, but it's really tough for you to get to me. You've got a lot of body blockers, et cetera, et cetera. But that's that's what I've been messing around with. I also messed around with the mission points team on broadcast last week that did not good. So we're not going to talk about it, <laughs> even though I thought it was even though I thought it was really fun and I thought it was really good. But then just like losing map all three games and getting dusted each game was like, dang, it's this been is tough. A few sets since we've gotten any mission point stuff. And I'm scared. It only gets harder every time we don't get it in a set. Like, I think right. tarot card. Like, I mean, X of Swords and then tarot cards. Uh, I think th that was the last. Did we get anything in Avengers Forever? The last stuff we got was in Batman Team oh. Up with Peacemaker, Avengers Dark Forever Side, and Indigo One. Modok was definitely one of them. Avengers Forever was a mission point. Yep. A so yeah, I mean, and then so was Immortus and Thanos. Yeah. So that was probably the last like big set of like stuff that we got. Oh, I I Batman really think Peacemaker helps. Stuff. And then so Indigo One, the biggest thing was like Watcher can go to any click, so I could just put Watcher lower dial, and then Indigo One could power heal him, and that's like an automatic four mission, maybe four mission points, yeah. a guaranteed two, but potentially four mission points off rip, which is really good. Um, and then it used Wrecker, and then it, and I mean, it's like it's been quote-unquote banned or, or added in certain things but there is a tarot card that also gives you a mission point for each click you've healed 
because right. that was so, also used with the watcher and just doing like an infinite heal loop right um so that one is now at max three for roc events i don't know if it's changed at all for whiz kids events or whatever but for roc events that one is like you can only heal three so if you were to do this team that i'm talking about with wrecker you get two mission points from wrecker and then if you roll the highest you can possibly roll with indigo one which is a uh, a six or a five so you heal four you get six points there and then you would get nine points plus three from that tarot card you get nine points like turn one if everything went super well or you'd get seven turn one which is also really gross really good so that's still a really good mission point strategy i think but man losing map and just having your stuff dusted by like someone that removes all your terrain and then like charge flurry or whatever sky tyrant or can just lock you down with uh scarlet witch is really really tough and that's just stuff i ended up playing against on just like you don't want to be on a short map with this mission point team you want to be as far away from your opponent as possible you don't want to even look at that guy I'm like hey man you don't mess with me i don't mess with you i want to heal my guys i want to destroy <laughs> some terrain and that's it you know but like, that was a fun team i enjoyed it i just don't think it holds up necessarily but that's what i've been building with prime cap U.S. Agent, 76 a bit, mission points. What uh, what'd you kind of play Sunday? You actually went to our practice and everything. Oh, what have um, you been kind of building with? Or were you judging? Well, no. For practice, there was a... Uh, there would be an odd number of people if I hadn't played. So okay. I ended up buying a couple packs. I pulled the super spidey from avengers 60 Ooh, okay and... so you're going a little sealed meta simian yeah so i mean that's funny it was obviously not the way that i would play it at states if i were to play but it was spider-man at 90 it was miss marvel at 50 um it was an avengers squad i can't remember everything else that was on it but uh luke cage was on there uh bats and doctor strange and then i think there was something else uh, but it's a good team. Spider-Man is nuts for... I mean, I played him at 90, but obviously you'd be playing him at like likely 25 just for the trait. Giving all Avengers wild card, and then they essentially could just copy Spider-Man team ability from him. Uh, that's what I right. was doing, because Bats and Doctor Strange both have super senses. Bats is traded, and then Strange has it on his dial. <clears throat> but it was... Uh, surprisingly effective for just like a couple boosters and what like I had in my box with me. Um, but that's what I ended up playing. And I, I did see a prime Hulk, although we weren't playing it the way that people online are thinking that it gets played. So I guess, you know, we'll have to change the way we play it unless there's Norada. Uh, and then I played, um, I played against another Avenger squad that was, able to beat me just straight off of uh war machine at full points like on build with the Ooh, prime okay. iron man and so because i'm coming in with spider-man and i'm using like kamala's empower i'm using the plus one from bats i'm using like all this stuff to get spider-man boosted the avengers team ability that he's copying stuff like that and then uh good old war machine says that adjacent friendly characters with like stark industry or robot keyword or armor i think it's stark industries or armor keyword uh when they're attacked the opposing character can't have their combat values positively modified that meant that spider-man was coming in and flurrying for uh three damage with like just a normal attack value, oh. an 11 attack for three and i was like oh so i did i did both my flurries on that first volley not realizing that's how it was going to be and then I was like, I have to reassess how I'm going to do this because that is not enough damage to do anything. Uh, right. But anyhow, what I would be building with if uh, if I was playing in states this year, I don't think I'll make any because I have a wedding. Oh, really? Oh, no. Yeah, I've got a wedding in South Dakota, and then I'll be judging, helping judge the Nebraska one. Um, but I really like Mystical, and I think there's one last run for the uh, Shifty Dooms, the old the old Doom Swaps. I think it's there, there's one last ride for those guys. So I'd be playing a mystical theme, uh, Doom, Felix Faust, no stranger there. Those have been both been in the meta for close to two years now. Uh, but then I haven't ran Saturnine or Merlin, and I really like both of their effects. So we've talked about Saturnine before. She does 
quite a bit of stuff. The biggest thing is that once per turn, you can increase or decrease an attack total by one. So that's an attack total. That's after rerolls and replacements and stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, and then she has TK, and when she uses it to place a character adjacent to an opposing character after resolutions, you can remove an action token from the placed character, which, depending on which doom you have, could be huge, could be cool. Uh, and then also she lets you do some tarot card shenanigans to have like a sideline swap for those. Okay. Uh, then our girl, Clea, so the one that just got the errata, uh, that would be on the team because I just Ooh, really want to try still, that out. Yeah. I think it's still really good. Uh, it allows me to not necessarily need barrier on this team. So that's the main reason that she's there is I like to get out and attack. I have some TK and stuff, so I can do that. Uh, my main attacker, obviously, just being Doom. And then the last piece on the team is going to be Merlin because he has Perplex, action total plus one, and then... During each player's turn, that player can't be can't give their characters free actions if they've already given a number of free actions equal to the actions their action total that turn. That means I'll have five actions on my turn, and my opponent will likely have four. Okay. But yeah. I just I really like it. So I'm obviously uh, starting with time platform doom. He just seems like the most logical one to start with because he has that free equipment there's 30 points left so it's possible that i just throw on like a dedicated leadership um or it's possible that i just use that for equipment and stuff but yeah i i think this team's really fun i really wanted to find a way to sneak 1776 on here to limit my opponent's action total uh or i think there's a black panther that also does that but yeah I wanted to do that, so then I have Merlin with my five actions and 1776, like, potentially limiting them to, you know, three. Because, yeah, I just think, even though it's not the most offensive team, I think uh, people vastly overestimate how many actions are free actions nowadays. And There's how a ton. often, yeah. Like, you might not do that free barrier because you might need a sidestep or a perplex or both. And then you might, you know, not be able to do your free TK because you're already at your cap of four that turn. So there's there's a lot of stuff. I think it, you know, I think Merlin is uh, one of my top underlooked pieces, although he did get second place at the uh, Kilted Classic a couple months ago. Oh, for so sure, not, yeah. Not really underlooked, but uh, it renewed that build particularly renewed my interest in him for sure because i was like oh dang like merlin actually you know actually doing stuff uh but yeah i i really like the team i think the biggest issue with it right now is doom is my really main attacker and when playing with doom if he's going to be your main attacker you usually have to switch into like the all caps doom so that you can actually pump out some damage uh or lord doom right. or I don't know. There's a, there's good options for Doom. Like, there always has been, but, like, there's still really good options. Lord Doom is great against Animal, if that's a thing that crops up a lot. Uh, he also, not for nothing, gets rid of Lantern Construct problems. So, there's that. You know, there's the... Uh, that is the really... Sorcerer Supreme true. one that can re-roll attack roll of character within range once per attack. He can re-roll the attack roll of a character within range in Line of Fire. So if they're doing flurry, you get to re-roll each of their flurry attacks, potentially. So there's stuff like that. There's a lot of fun stuff on the team, or on the swap side of things, I should say. Okay, right on. I do like something like that. I do think a lockdown team, like, really cutting down actions would be really good and really interesting today. Because there's just literally, like you said, there's so many free actions, so much stuff you can do all this garbage so i think that would i think that would hinder a lot of teams there's the like venom magneto tk free tk you know angler up all that crazy stuff yeah so that'd be <clears> interesting <throat> so i'm Sakari i am curious to see powers. what all yeah sack man choosing powers well that's at the beginning of your turn oh is that not free okay yeah well there's still like sidesteps outwits but like sidestep outwit perplex stuff like that you know things of that nature yeah. that are like free actions to do but yeah still like 
Well, and then with Faust on the team, they're likely just to never use oh, that yeah. perplex. It's very true. Probably not. Probably don't even want to take that risk. Yeah, take a risk to waste one of your few free actions. Free actions, and then maybe hurt yourself. Yeah, no thanks. That's ugh. That's rough. That's tough. So okay, right on, Simeon. That is that is all our team talk. I am curious. You, listener, what are you going to run for teams? Do you have any fun, kind of different builds that we would like to take a look at? We're not going to totally blow your spot up and like read it out on air, but if you just want to sh- share it, you know, or if you don't care if we read it on air, send it in to dialage for hero clicks at gmail.com or on our Facebook or Twitter just as a message. We would love to go over some states' teams, maybe help you out, give you some advice. Uh, just look at them and see it. There's some cool, interesting tech that people are running. That's not just like. Scarlet with Guy Tyrant, you have Prime Hulk, you know, like just kind of the it's good because it's good stuff. You got any yeah. unique cool. stuff? We'd love to take a look. It'd be really cool. Run Scarlet but, Witch with the uh, uh, Sakari and Iron Man and <clears throat> Kazar so that you can move them for free. And it's, mm, it's exactly. Amazing. Incredible. How did you think of it? How how daring? What, what yeah. unique team build? What unique design? Uh, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Listener questions over on our Patreon. If you join five bucks a month, you can go ahead and get access to our Discord where people ask these questions. You get entries into a monthly giveaway. You get you know action tokens, all this really cool stuff. It's only five bucks. You get to see videos early, et cetera, et cetera. Patreon's pretty awesome. Many people have told me it's better than some free Discord servers that are for HeroClix, which is really high cool. Praise. Won't name names. It is very high praise. So <laughs> people have a great time. We play, uh, we play games. We do Patreon hangouts, and these games that we play have like real rewards and stuff. So it's really fun. They're all free once you just pay to just be in our Patreon. So it's all sorts of cool stuff we do over on our Patreon in our Discord server. I think we have a ton of fun there. I'm a little biased, of course, but it's a great time. So. Cody asks over here, I absolutely love Cool Stuff, Inc. and have used them since I first heard about them on the podcast. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, However, today is the first day of their Father's Day sale, and they chose to use Batman pieces as the Heroclix representation. How do you feel about using a character famous for not having a father and then becoming a mostly absentee father slash adoptive (laughs) father uh, who decides to throw his children on the streets in tights to fight thugs with guns? I, I don't know. Batman takes care of a lot more kids than like Spider Man, Captain America, Iron yeah. Man, or uh, Superman, uh, Wonder Woman. I guess she's not a dad, but like still, like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> Batman takes care of a lot of kids, and whether or not he is a good dad, he is still a dad. Yeah, Father's Day is so, not just for good dads; it's also for nope. all the terrible ones. I mean, um, I wish my dad a happy Father's Day. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know you're not listening to this, but it's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. Anyways. No, I, I will say because he does have a biological son and then multiple adoptive yeah. sons, um, it doesn't matter that his his parents are dead for this specific yeah. holiday. <laughs> yeah. This is like specifically like he is who the is, one being celebrated because like, he is the father. You're celebrating Father's Day? Uh, Your but dad's the, dead. What are you celebrating for? And it's like, Jace, bro. Even the alternate dark. universe uh, Thomas Wayne Batmans technically also still oh, yeah. fathers. I mean. Exactly. We're fathers. I, I don't know. How does that work? <laughs> yeah. In but, Flashpoint, it's, <laughs> he was a father. Yeah. I don't I don't think Father's Day is a, I don't think it uh, decides whether or not you're, you have to be a no. good dad or not. Which maybe it and, should. Uh, maybe it should be like as far as dad you know, day instead of father day. <laughs> then we don't like we yeah. don't celebrate it for certain. I don't know. I think uh, I think cool stuff Inc. is fine with using Batman as a representation for a father and Father's sometimes, Day. There's not a ton of sometimes like. Sometimes they really try and stretch to fit stuff for their themes. Yeah, some, I don't think this is one of their worst. This isn't ones. no. This They've, isn't one of the worst ones. We've definitely seen some where it's like. Yeah, uh, it's like our Halloween sale, and it'll be like uh, Spider Man dressed as like a different person, like bombastic. Bag oh yeah, it'll be stuff like that. that. And yeah. It's like just because he put a bag on his head doesn't mean that he's dressed up for Halloween. But they're like, oh, but he's in a different costume. Like, yeah, sure, okay. It's like a bit of a stretch, yeah. yeah. Some stuff like that where it's like, I get it, sure, he's different costumes. It's like not like, oh, what about like the undead set or the generics from World's Finest, like etc. Like some real spooky mystical monster stuff. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I think this is fine. You know, is Batman the best father? No, but a father nonetheless. Uh, and I'd say a decent representation as far as Heroclix goes. Because, like, what other prominent, like, 
father figure are you going to use? It's like is Odin. There's like four Odins Whoa, you can put on sure. sale. You know, I appreciate cool stuff. I think putting Batman on sale. It's like a bunch of characters, a bunch of modern characters you can put on sale. Yeah, a lot of like C U R too. Else. Yeah, like you know. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah, they a lot of them have like kids and like alternate futures or stuff. But um, right. Like I can't think of Iron Man. Like Tony doesn't have a kid. Spider Man yeah. does. He does have like May Parker and stuff and different random storylines occasionally. Um, I'm actually side tangent. Really enjoying Edge of Spider Geddon. It's like a Spider Verse tie in. The universe okay. with like 13 year old Peter and Spider Ben, his uncle. Ooh, it's like, interesting. It's like Peter got bit by the spider and then. Ben got shot or something and had a blood transfusion, so he also gets the spider powers, oh. and they like form like a little duo. And he's like this grizzled old man that's like, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's fun. It's short, uh, but it's fun. That is that is pretty cool. All right. Next up, Steve asks, "Will we ever see captains and sidekicks again?" Man, it's super looking like no. When was the last time? Was it was it Empire? Was that our last captain sidekick H set? Units has it's an been to search. It's been a minute. I think captains and sidekicks are pretty dead. I which is sad because we never got again, I'll say this till the day I die, the most prominent comic book captain who also has a sidekick as a captain. We didn't get Captain America and Bucky as a captain and sidekick. We yeah. did get Batman and Robin as a captain. We got Batman as a captain, but we didn't get a Robin as a sidekick. It's really wild. Um, honestly, it's quite silly we didn't get actual iconic like heroes with sidekicks, and instead we got like the F4 and some children's um, and then I did like the way they did it in Wonder Woman. That was like fine, where it's more like a general and their army as captain and sidekick, which was still a fine way to use it. And I super enjoyed the games we played. Um, and then there were some sidekicks with like Etta Candy and Wonder Woman and whatnot. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a real shame that sidekick captain think... mechanic existed and then <laughs> ceased to exist before it was really used. Yeah, I guess I would say properly. In my because opinion, we didn't see any in X of Swords and we didn't see any in Avengers Forever, which would have been prime, like Avengers Forever, especially. We had so many quote unquote oh, yeah. captains and then like their like general and then the generics. We had so many of those that it would have been wild to have that mechanic and not use it. I will say, um, I'm, I'm honestly not super sad that it's gone because. The sidekicks felt no. like they were so close to being either broken or just like garbage. Like there was no in between. It was like this this could be broken if XYZ. And then they were like, well, we're not going to design it like that because then it would be broken. So instead you get like right. that thing. And <laughs> like, especially the first iteration in Future Foundation, there was just, I really wanted those kids to like have some moment in the sun. And it just never really came around. Yeah, got close though. Yeah, I will say, like the mechanic itself, I did enjoy. I like the idea of a captain giving out a power or doing something special to a sidekick. And I really um, like the them allies. Something. The ally stuff was great. Oh yeah, all the allies. That was really cool, and that was that was probably the best part of it. Then it was again. It was hindered by the captains not being that good, or the sidekicks not being that good. Where and that that was weird, especially with Empire. If you look at Empire, you're like, man, Super Scroll is bad. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, Taskmaster. Taskmaster is bad. horrible. You know, all yeah. these figures have these. You know, Wasp is bad. Like all the captains and stuff have like really bad dials. Like there's well, something stopping them because they're a captain from being from like having yeah, a decent dial, I guess. Because for some they're a reason. captain, you can't do anything other than that. Yeah, or they just kind of have a uh, some other funny little leadership yeah. or something, right? It's like it was really kind of rough, you know. And I even liked the like the scroll spy is the most played sidekick, and no one plays him because he's a sidekick. You know what I mean? Like the Kree soldier is a really cool like generic i actually really like him and he's a decent sidekick with the running shot and all that stuff and he has good captains you know I mean, uh what's his name? bell dan but like man these captains were just not like good we're just not playable 
themselves or I worth think, playing uh, with Task a bunch Master of sidekicks. The best like version to show like what was wrong with the captains. Uh, he yeah. has the the trait where it's free. Choose a friendly sidekick. Blah blah blah. They can do something. The captain thing, and then that's it. He has no attack power yeah. for his first four clicks, no damage power for his last four clicks, and he's a rare, and then you look at the other rares, so like literally the next one, she has a trait and a special damage power. The next one, special damage power and a trait. Next one, trait, special damage, or defense power. Uh, but yeah, it's like special power, trait, special power, trait. The whole list of rares, and then even Colossus, three traits, you know, um, oh right, but yeah. old Taskmaster, he got a trait, and that was it. <laughs> so and right, it was, just it was a trait that like... literally only worked if you were running sidekicks. Now, to be fair, it was like one of the cooler ones. It totally was. It would have been but crazy man, if it no... had worked for if it was like instead of a friendly sidekick, if it was just like free choose or just free friendly sidekicks can use the displayed damn standard defense power that an opposing character adjacent to that sidekick can use i think if it was just that he might have seen play like i might have played sidekicks with him uh but because it was one it was like oh cool i can protect one of my three click long dials the rest will just have to figure it out but i can super (laughs) just you know protect one of them potentially maybe they're copying impervious and they'll hit the rollout who knows right but yeah, it's, I, I yeah, think for up. sure if uh, they had just given him a bit more wings, we would have seen him fly more. And especially because Avengers Avengers Forever, we didn't see anything. And that, to me, feels like Hydra agents, shield operatives. Right. Uh, you know, Captain Bucky. <laughs> Captain yeah, Bucky. <laughs> all of that stuff. Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange, and, and all his yeah, all that stuff. Or the yeah. yeah, or the you know astral Doctor Strangers. There's so much stuff where it's like these would have been perfect uses uses for that, and they didn't get them. So I'm guessing it's done. I yeah, it's got to be done. Sadly, you know, it's just it was cool, it was a neat idea, but alas, here we are again. On the flip side of that, secret identity has got to be just yeah, oh, yeah, you know, like all that stuff has just. Hundred percent. All that gotta be for dead. one set. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they use secret identity again in like Wonder Woman. Oh, that's like right. One character, I think, like just literally just for like a few Wonder Womans or whatever. But like that was it, and like secret identity was still really really cool. It was like it's going to be in this set, so it was like a ton of and well, they, this is also a set where they like we're going to use the heck out of autonomous for the first time like ever, you know, giving it to like yeah. standard base characters, and it's like all right, that was a mistake. We shouldn't have given it to standard base characters, no, even no. though no one plays them anyways, which is really we, funny. We rarely see autonomous since then. Like yeah, even on bystanders, on the, on the bystanders in Wonder Woman 80th, then not on the Batman team up bystanders. Yeah. So we saw it on on some of them. I should specify, um, but yeah, it was weird that we had physical dialed characters with autonomous. Where I think previous to that, it had to be like a special trait or something that where they got autonomous in certain situations, like the Falcon who got it if he was on a team with Cat. Oh, right. That was so really like, cool. And he was also like a prime. So there's a special, yeah, yeah, double literally. special like reason why he could get that. But then, you know, Mary Jane's like, eh, I'm just here for way yep. cheaper yep. and uh, not unique. Yeah, sadly. So, no, I don't think we ever see that come back. I mean, so just like speaking about just stuff that's dead. You know, like title characters. Was that also yeah. Empire or War of the Realms? We haven't seen a title character since that, which sucks. We're both big title character guys. Was just, there one in nope. War of the Realms? I don't think so. There now that I say it, I don't think we Disney got a title Plus. Thor or anything. Yeah, I think uh, um, I think title characters are super dead. I think Empire you know? was close to having them with M- Empire. Just had Hulk that Man? Iron Man. Uh, he no, Iron Man, Man was straight up a title so, yeah, character. Just, just the Iron Man. Yeah, I think that's literally it, too. Like, yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge bummer. But like, so it's been almost. I mean, it's closing in on two years of sets yeah. without any title characters. Wow, huge, huge bummer. I, I really, I did like them. They had some fundamental problems, but yeah, I think a lot of, I think a lot of mechanics are just kind of dead right yeah. now. You know, this this Does question just like, kind of made me realize. Yeah, <laughs> like mission points missing out on the last couple sets. 
I'd really yeah. love for mission points to not be dead. I know I, I don't want to be dead. Either. I honestly holding out hope. They made pulp. They made Silver Age. Uh, they're potentially even running Golden Age stuff. Which wow, that seems why? Nuts. What a headache! How would you even judge? How would you even begin yeah, to judge? Please that? don't. Yeah. Um, and then like the theme stuff. So they've got like these new formats. Why isn't there just like a mission point format? How oh that would be so would cool. Be both teams are just going for mission points and like yeah, there's not as many characters as you could run. The if they allowed tarot cards, everyone would have essentially the same deck. But basically, probably yeah. rather than like attacking characters, like you might still attack characters for certain reasons, but you might also just like you know be Susan Queen of Atlantis seen it up, you know, Atlantis Morset, uh, you know. Of yeah, the still waiting for her to be meta. Still waiting for her to be playable. <laughs> It's so close. Uh, I tried it. I tried so hard after we got that message. Well, not after we got the message, but like six months after we got that message when we got some other Atlantean water stuff where I was like, ooh, maybe. Ooh. And uh, water. It's still not quite there, I don't think. Oh, gosh. Even with Uh, the train changes, still not quite there. Oh, that is sad. Our last question coming in from Tyler. He asks. With the fancy new glowing clicks in the Ghost Rider set announced, what are some DC figures that could benefit from a glowing effect? Hmm. This is this is a good question. I think lanterns are the first ones to come to mind. I would love oh, to see some dope. glow in the dark lantern pieces. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of that right away. Uh, right, I yeah. Of, I thought of Death Storm right away, which he's only oh Firestorm slash from, Death Storm. Yeah, so he's the crime syndicate version of Firestorm. But I don't know why, just because his head is on fire and stuff. So he reminds me of Ghost Rider, I guess. But yeah, the lanterns, absolutely. If the constructs and stuff had been glow in the dark, sheesh. That would have oh. been so cool, dude. Oh my gosh, glow in the dark constructs. Are you kidding? Ah! Oh, I know we talked so about this baller. once already, but the cost of. I don't know how they sculpt these or whatever kind of molds they use, but the cost of glow in the dark PLA to standard PLA is zero difference there's no difference Ooh, in the cost there's no so, reason not to make it glow in the dark oh yeah baby. anytime there's a translucent effect well translucent stuff is slightly more expensive but we're talking like a dollar per like okay. five pounds difference oh that's so like that it's hardly a difference when you're buying in bulk i'm assuming the factory that whiz kids uses or whatever buys in decent bulk but yeah imagine larflees is sculpt if that if that glowed Ooh, oh baby or like a dark side with a glowing boom tube and glowing eyes the omega beam effect glowing there's a lot of cool stuff in dc okay, that, I, glow. Like that. I don't know kind of depends on like how how small they could go with it because it'd be cool if they got something like uh slade's eye like deathstroke's eye or Death shot, death oh, shot. That would be so shot, neat. Dead shot. Such like tiny little details. Yeah, yeah. They could do tiny stuff. I remember growing up, I had a Batman who had this like red translucent back. Like it was a hole in the back of his head where it was like this translucent material and it like fed out to his eyes. So if you looked at him from the front, it just looked like translucent eyes, but there was this hole in the back of his head. So if you held him up to the light, the light would come through that translucent stuff and like make his Ooh. eyes kind of glow. And Ooh. that was pretty cool. And that wasn't even glow in the dark. That was just plain old weird Batman. I don't know. Yeah, what, what that's version that that's was. Neat. But uh is there anything else from I mean obviously it's like, like the it's lightning just like, like characters that use stuff. like yeah, fire, lightning, lanterns, things like the biggest ones that come Everyone that got an FX base for the most part in Joker's Wild could probably have had there glow, in the dark. glow in the dark mud for Clayface. Why not? I don't know. Mm, what would <laughs> mud <laughs> glowing in the dark? What? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I was thinking more like Firefly and those guys that. Had oh the sure, effects, there you go. Diablo. Yeah, Diablo. Stuff like that. Effects. Okay, then yes. All right, I could, I'd be down. I'd be down for something Star like that. Starfire would be pretty tight. She's always got like a big glowy effect. Oh yeah, her hair. Yeah, her hair is like uses like a flight base a lot of the time, a fiery kind of hair. That'd be cool. I'd be down for something like that. Yeah, yeah. I can't really think of too many other DC characters. I, I think it'd be 
yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool with stuff like that. That all sounds. Oh, Wonder Woman for lasso glow, glowed gold. Oh, that's true. That's That'd true. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. You know, I'd be down for something like she that. Had, like a cool. sculpt where she's got it like wrapped around somebody or just swinging it or something. Oh yeah, dude. Ah, her like wrapped like, around a bad guy, around like a thug yeah. or something. That would look so cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would look tight. We just need that as sculpt, period. Not even as glow in the dark. Just like one of them with like her lasso wrapped around like a villain or something, around like a generic criminal. That'd be so cool looking. I would I would really like that. We saw the upcoming goons from Notorious, so Yeah. That'd be a good use of a goon re sculpt is wrap them in a a lasso. A lasso up them goons. Yeah. Get them all get them all taken care of. Get them off the streets. Get them off the streets. All right. All right. We we forgot about it two weeks in oh, a row. No. That's right. Sorry, Malcolm. But Malcolm has a question. Uh, he wants us to build a team for modern silver and pulp, I believe, using across the Spider-Verse characters or Spider-Verse characters. So I'm not going to build these teams per se because there's just an uh, insane amount of options that you could do. And if you're specifically wanting Spider-Verse characters... Uh, I'm just going to go and say the chase theme from Spider-Man uh, Spider and Venom Absolute Carnage. Most of those are alternate versions of Spider-Man. There's Steampunk Penny, which is the SP slash slash DR. And there's also a convention version of SP slash slash DR, as well as one that came out in the Spider-Man Beyond Amazing set. So there's actually three versions of those that you can choose from. Uh, there's Spider Viking, Spider Pharaoh, Spider-Man 1776, Miles Miles West, Spider Hammer Eye. Uh, I wouldn't include Leonardo de Venom and Gwen of Arc, but, you know, they're there. There's Spirit Spider, there's Spider-Man 2099, there's Superior Spider-Man, Venom Ghost Spider, and then just a generic Spider-Man. So, And that's just the chases and super rares from that set, from one set. So there's a lot of options. There's an insane amount. I would just use the Spider-Man family keyword on like HC Realms or HC Units. Bombastic Bagman's another one. Uh, Spider Supreme, Peter the Hunter, Arachnite. There's a ton of stuff to play with. Too many options to really build teams for if this is specifically what you want to build for. And that's not including also just Spider-Man. Just plain old Peter oh, wow. with the name Spider-Man. Uh, he has... An insane amount of iterations. You can use, like, the Fantastic Four one. You can use the one with the helmet for the Asgardian War of the Realms stuff. You can use one of the 12 that have incapacitate with one or two or even three targets. Uh, you can use the one that has leap climb. You can use the one that has hypersonic. You don't know which ones I'm talking about? That's because there's literally hundreds of hundreds there's there's that gotta be a thousand spider-men at this point in this game uh so many to choose from but yeah just use the spider-man family keyword narrow it down i'm not gonna build three specific teams because like i said it just wouldn't make sense to try to it just there's so many options that uh i could build all three teams with just characters that are Peter Parker, Spider-Man from like slightly right. different versions of himself. So yeah, it's a, it's literally an insane amount. There's so, so many endless possibilities, especially if you just say it only has to be a Spider-Man like family theme team, then that's like quite literally borderline endless possibilities. Yeah. With well, this is cheating and whatnot. The that is true. It doesn't have to be spider even, people, uh, Spider-Man family. These are quote unquote spider verse people. Uh, uh, spider verse people. Yeah. So they're even, I'm, but I mean, just between Avengers 60th and Spider-Man Beyond Amazing, just those two sets, the two most recent Marvel sets, there's an insane amount of Spider-Mans. A lot. A lot of Spider-Dudes. Or like Spider-adjacent spider. dudes. But Too yeah. many. And Super I agree with Dactoid. Morlin. I'm Team Morlin on this one. <laughs> you gotta hunt down them Spider-Totems. Yeah, hunt them down. Kill them. Ooh, kill them. This is what I would, so, side tangent. Into the Rhinoverse, right? Oh, here we go. So the, the family or whatever, the the prog, progeny, pro, promeny? Pro, 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 what? What was Moreland from? It wasn't the family. 
no idea. Um, I didn't actually read that. I just know he's beating up Spidey on his on inheritors. Face. That's what they were called, the inheritors. Oh uh, yeah. So course. they were they weren't just after spider people. Like that's what the whole story is because spider people are better at surviving. But the inheritors apparently their whole thing was uh, tracking down animal totems like throughout the universe. Oh, stuff. okay. And so the reason why they were hunting down Spidermans is because they're like Spidermans are powerful and they quote unquote are an animal totem bearer, like, you know, the spider. Sure, I guess. But Rhino also in multiple universes, also a totem bearer, right? He's okay. got the whole suit and stuff. That's right. I want to see like a janky, worse version of the Inheritors trying to take on the Rhinoverse, where it's just the Rhinos throughout time and different universes. They're just going after a yeah. the Russian got, last name, got whatever. Gwen it is. Rhino. Oh, got geez. Miles Rhino for whatever reason. Ah, no, it'd be Aaron Davis Rhino, I guess. Who am I kidding? Oh, definitely. Yeah, Miles can't be Rhino, villain. So yeah, definitely be his uncle who has to constantly be the vi- villain. Uh, but no, I think that'd be hilarious. I had this thought like a couple weeks back where I was like, why isn't there like an Into the Rhino verse or like, I don't know. There's really Doctor Octopus, also kind of a totem. <laughs> I mean, he has in, it in his name, yeah. In, in the Rhino verse, they I have feel to like... kill every version of Rocksteady as well. Yeah, <laughs> they're also of course. cutting through the TMNT and stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, if only they knew there were actual turtles they could hunt down. Uh, Ooh, if only they no, knew. The, I don't think the inheritors go after people that just like dress up or call themselves animal something. Oh. So Serpent Society's fairly lucky so far. That'd be another good crossover. Serpent Society, like into the serpent. Uh, verse. I would see now. That's what I'd be down for. I, you know me. I'm big, big cat villain, big super serpent society fan. I, I'd love to get them. Sure, go hunt down the serpent society. Spoiler, probably pretty easy to yeah. do compared to they the are like B list yeah. villains. Um, they're pretty low on the on the villain tier list. So, yeah. Oh goodness gracious, Simeon! If they wanted to buy. <laughs> All of these Spider Mans. You want all the Spider All of these Rhinos. For Into yeah. the Spider Verse or Into the Rhinos? Yeah, if I want to. You want all the Rhinos for the Rhinos? Either, either one. I love it's both teams. Definitely going to be a comic that's coming out soon, so you might oh, want to get course. a jump on it. And go to coolstuffinc.com where they have all the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. Uh, it's. You know, a week past now. I think it was even last week I said it, but Avengers 60th is up on the website. Some things have already even sold out. Probably those things that we talked about on this episode. Good old uh, Clea and, I believe, Prime Hulk. Both definitely going to be gone at this point. But they've got all the other stuff. You want to pick up a CUR, you want to pick up a couple super rares or chases even, check them out and use code DIAL5 when you do to save 5%. And if you want to use a slightly higher code, you can go to, uh, not Cool Stuff Inc., you can go to shop.wizkids.com and use dial H10 to save 10% off on your Heroclix orders, as long as it's not Iconics, and it won't work on Scott Porter's the next time around. So everything else that's Heroclix related, good to go, but yeah, not those. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over okay, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. They're going to be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because I'm going to make Hero Clicks like that forever. Are you kidding?